welcome to the National Conclave on Sustainable Food Systems 2025. Today we are sitting with Dr. K. S. Grewal uh, from the Keg Farms Private Limited and we are going to speak to him about uh, backyard and smallholder poultry systems and their role in biodiversity, climate and livelihood. So Dr. Grewal, welcome. Thank you. And firstly, tell us a bit about your work that you're doing at the uh, Keg Farms and how it is helping uh, smallholder farmers. So Keg Farms is a five decade old company. Keg Farms recognized that uh, the rural poultry that we have in India was based on, they had some expertise. The expertise that they had is that they were rearing chickens in their backyards, mm -hmm. but that was non-remunerative. Mm -hmm. The chicken was growing slow. It didn't lay ma many number of eggs. What Keg Farms recognizes, if we can replace this chicken by a high yielding chicken or an improved variety, we can make more economic sense. So what Keg Farms did is it developed breeds, which is called as the uh, low input technology birds. One is Keroiler and another is Sorangi, which laid much more number of eggs and which grew faster. So basically without changing what they knew, without actually training them, we just replaced the birds in the villages. With that, what has happened is the activity that we're doing, which was just a traditional activity converted into a remunerative activity. Mm -hmm. With that, what, what has happened is that the cycles that we, they were doing, they were doing maybe three or three cycles in a year. It went up to five cycles a year. So every household on an average, if they're keeping 10 to 12 chicken, they would now earn between about seven to 8,000 rupees on an average in about two months. So that's, that's, that's the scale. And now what we have seen is that this system that we are doing, we are not directly delivering the chicks to the households. There are intermediaries. The intermediaries like is that we give chicks to a dealer or to a mother unit. Mm -hmm. They raise the chicks to about two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. And these, after rearing for two to three weeks, these are given to hawkers. Mm -hmm. The hawkers are also self-sustaining entrepreneurs they will take chicks at an x price they will add their 10 rupees and supply it to the villages yeah. now they supply to the villages for example at 60 rupees so this when they supply to the villages at 60 rupees the females uh, the the uh, women will particularly who are rearing these birds will feed them kitchen based or whatever is organic matter which is left there in about one and a half to two months those birds will grow if they're selling for meat they sell it about 250 rupees a kg or so so 60 rupees has gone to 250 rupees yeah that is the that is how it is helping scaling up you know their incomes so it's a livelihood support now it is also helping in a way that we they're not feeding the uh, commercial feed to the uh, birds they're only using kitchen waste whatever is the waste organic matter is being converted into high quality protein or eggs and as a circular economy, what is also happening is that the birds, they will, whatever is the uh, droppings that they do in places, it adds to the soil as manure. So the cycle continues. So uh, I think very interesting example of livelihood, economy, uh, circular economy, management of waste. But what is your current scale of the project and, and uh, how are you scaling it up further? What challenges do you see in the, in the scaling up of this project? As of now, we are covering good about 16 states of India. Okay. We started in uh, about five decades back with the very small numbers. Now we supply good about 25 lakh chicks mm -hmm. into the villages. How we are scaling it up is that, you know, we also have uh, technical expertise which we share with the developmental agencies. They put them into their developmental schemes and then that's how they take it further to newer areas like for example we have uh, gone even beyond meghalaya to the seven sister states okay. we are supplying hatching eggs to arunachal pradesh and uh, to the extent we are also supplying stocks to andaman nicobar which is which yeah. is way beyond the okay. um, into the ocean right. so that's how we are um, uh, we are trying to uh, trying to encourage and trying to increase the footprint of this particular model which is a which is a very um, you can say sustainable model for the rural economy when we talk about challenges the two challenges that we face one is because it still is poultry so to produce poultry we use the same resources as the industrial poultry 
the main resource is or the input cost that we have is of feed mm -hmm. so at the parent stock level the same feed that we are using is is, is it competes with what the broiler production or the other production systems use mm -hmm. so there is a lot of fluctuation in that so one challenge is the input cost and mm -hmm. the second challenge is that we supply the chicks or the agencies supply the chicks into the villages people rear it but they do not have markets in the sense they do not have markets in the rural areas the markets are there in the urban urban areas okay. where these bird uh, birds are sold at a premium mm. so the market linkages that is the backward linkages is another challenge that we face okay. so while scaling it up through the government agencies also they are also able to produce at a very efficient scale because in this you are not using commercial feed Mm. So the challenge that we have, we have been trying that you know if we could get an agency which could, yeah. which could uh, you know cover this gap, but still it remains a challenge for us. Yeah, actually my my next question is also linked to what you are saying. Uh, given these challenges that you are facing and given the larger scale to which you have gone, what do you think is the role of different stakeholders? For example, the government. you as an industry and then there are the farmer themselves how can different actors play a role in in streamlining this making it smoother and and expanding the coverage see we have been uh, getting a lot of support from the government recently mm -hmm. through the because the government has got various uh, developmental uh, projects wherein they make the project through the nrlm that's the national yes. uh, rural livelihoods mission they they have the beneficiaries because um, the field level people or the veterinary department there in the states in the districts or in the blocks they are assigned to to connect to the beneficiaries what they the state government is now doing is that in the absence of the stocks available with this government they are procuring those stocks from from us or from the private sector mm -hmm. so we are supplying the same uh, quality chicks through the government mm. which is a very good support but here i would like to ask or i would like to request if the government could provide even more support to us there could be two types of supports which i can ask for one is if the government could could give us some sort of a subsidy in the in the input costs because the input mm. costs when it competes when when it competes with the commercial sector we are not we are not able to um, sustain uh, those high costs at some point in time for example uh, about 2 years back the soya cost went up to 1 lakh rupees now in the commercial poultry they can afford because they have an integrated system but when we produce at a high cost we cannot put that cost to a poor farmer so we try to maintain our our selling cost remains practically at the same levels but if the input cost goes high then it affects us all right uh, thank you dr grewal i think you're doing tremendously interesting work in taking forward backyard and smallholder poultry systems as a long term solution to sustainability uh, we hope you enjoyed the conversation and we'll keep coming back to you thank you